That's it, we're live. Uh, welcome back to All Stars MMA Podcast. Mr. Mitchell, how are you feeling, mate? You all right? I feel like shit. That's it, it's a good start. Uh, a quick shout out to our sponsors. <laughs> uh, we're sponsored by Amazing Green CBD. Uh, use code AVT10 and get some uh, get your stocks in for Christmas. Um, as always, good get your reviews. socks in for Christmas. Get your socks in. Do they do socks? Danny, pull a shit up. <laughs> um, and uh, Ali, uh, Muscle Medicine. And also, we need to give a shout out to Excess Guard as well. Hooked us up with some uh, new mouth guards. Hooked you up for yeah for, for the fight. I smash your smash gum shield. Did you see that one? So, how <laughs> could you miss it, mate? Yeah, <laughs> talking <laughs> internet. Yo, even in Spain, they're asking me about all these <laughs> defense. Ah! Not even joking, like yeah, not even joking. Everyone's got their own favorite. Everyone, uh, the gun one's a favorite. I think it's just for the little uh, the start. All oh, my mates saying, "You know that, sir?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah." yeah. <laughs> 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 it's his face where he's like. This is a, a replica. <laughs> <laughs> that's the second one. Not a real gun, guys. Just Obviously not. But you did that one initially with Rico at the gym, didn't you? About yeah, gun, yeah, gun. I did a lot. But I got, I got, that went under the radar yeah, a little yeah. bit. Uh, but yeah, so f- go check out them guys. Ali at Muscle Medicine and uh, XS Guard. And uh, yeah, Mr. Mitchell, I'll hand it over to you, mate. Um, yeah, so we're joined today by uh, world-renowned matchmaker... Uh, soulless Padman, <laughs> Mr. Carl Prince. Nice to be here. Thanks for having me, fellas. Anyway, yeah, what a great introduction, mate. <laughs> Getting the soulless shouting first. I was thinking about a chronicle, like a, le- a timeline of your life, and it always starts and ends without not having a soul or being ginger, so I'll take it, mate. Yeah. There you go, there you go. <laughs> so you wanted to talk initially about um, <coughs> when you've stopped dying on us. Sorry. I'm sorry. A, mate, HIV. Well, thanks for locking us in a little room just before yeah. Christmas with him, yeah? It'll make, for, be Ill. it'll make for good listening. He messaged yeah. us this morning saying, oh, I feel like shit. I shouldn't have gone. I went to the gym last night. I shouldn't have done it. <laughs> I, I shouldn't have gone wrestling. It's not my back by about a Jessup's week. Jessup's fault. Fucking hell, Jessup. I said, I had your back. I had it covered. fine. But yeah, we might as well jump straight into uh, Cage Steel this weekend. Yeah, what, what just... A, yeah, what just, I do. Just finished that. Did you, have you seen any videos yet, Carl? No, no, I saw a bit of Louis. That was about it, really. Yeah. <clears throat> Some sick fights. Um, obviously, usually every show there's always dropouts and that, do you know what yeah. I mean? And then, but this this show, like the, the main part of the card held up. So all the title fights were like sick fights. Yeah. Like yeah. Louis fight. Louis and Brams were like the two sort of main ones, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. How tough were Louis' opponent, though? Yeah. Fuck well, when it, I got in the corner... Got, he got knocked fuck out for, what, four and a half rounds? Yeah. five rounds. Well, Coming I, in late as well, didn't he? Come, like, took it a couple yeah, of weeks before. Yeah, a couple of weeks before. And then, because uh, he's fought... The kid's 4-0, and oh, 19, same as Louis. 7-2 and two in K1. So he had that sort of striking background as well. So obviously, Louis got a lot more experience than that. But then uh, Ash Roden were in corner with me, and the, the kid looks a bit like he looks young, doesn't he? The kid who we were fighting, he like looked young, and he looked. Louis like, oh, I think he's scared. Do you know what I mean? I think I think I've got him here. And then he just fucking <laughs> took everything Louis threw. I was like, shit, this kid's well, tough. There's a there's a danger when someone's not been beaten, though, isn't they? Like as if like they don't know how to lose, really. Yeah. Like other people, if you're saying they're getting beat up for four rounds, they're like have a look around. They've had a bit of a go, and maybe they'll find a soft place to land. But if you've never lost, you you'd be like protecting that hole because you don't know how to go down do you, I guess. Yeah, it wouldn't end where like every leg kick that Louis landed, everyone's like. Ah. You know when it stops being fun, you're like, oh god, <laughs> oh, somebody just throw a towel in or something like. Nah, but it, it was good because the the kid started strong, and then he sort of like as the round progressed, you know, Louis picked up the pace, and then and then the second round, the kid started strong again. It's like the start of every round, the, the kid was starting good, so I'm like, Louis, you need to stay fucking switched on. It, yeah. you can't switch off. You know, you got five rounds. You need to be like on the ball because this kid's coming out. And then I think the third round, the kid came out and. It Louis with a good right hand. It like caught him, and Louis just laughed, and then yeah, switched, that switched him back on a bit. Yeah, yeah, but I, it was good that the kid would. It, the kid were dangerous, even though Louis dominated every round. Yeah. I thought the kid were dangerous all the way through. Yeah. Like it were. Well, just for the, I've been away, right? Not for that long. And has Louis at least got got a beard, or did he at least yeah, have one? Yeah, Wait, yeah. How's he grown? I tell you what, what, I didn't even know this. It was the, the Wayne photo. He had a fucking tan. I'll tell you that. Oh, oh yeah, did yeah. it? Well, that goes without <laughs> saying that, mate. Yeah, but like a beard, or like yeah. It was the waiting photo. I'm like, fucking hell, what's happened here? Like, I didn't know, I didn't know this. <laughs> yeah. I think he must have just like got a surge, got a surge <laughs> of testosterone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I thought it'd been like a Team America or something like. Stuck it on uh, his face. He was gone for the fight though, weren't it? Yeah, he had he had like a bit of one there. Yeah, but the weigh-ins, it were just like, yeah, crazy. Must have died it. Shout out to Sarah Lee Scott at the makeup lounge. <laughs> yeah, true. <yeah. laughs> Him and uh, Brad Kittrick must have gone for the same spray tan as well because they both came in absolutely glowing. Yeah. Like, when are they going to start putting like you know <laughs> tattoos on the back like Polish people? Yeah, like they have all them yeah, sponsors to make a bit of drinks. I think it's smart though, isn't it? It's a good idea. Yeah, I'm guessing uh, 
can't. Well, you can't do anything at UFC, can you? What, over, what about Bellator? Do they allow, allow that in Bellator? I doubt it. It's yeah. all tightened up, that now, isn't it? I think. Uh, no, I think there's pretty much only UFC that have got it locked down. You're allowed your own individual sponsors and all other organisations. That's why a lot of jump ship from UFC to Bellator. Cause Which probably should have given him a microphone. Yeah. Those that are listening, uh, Jessup's just talking, talking shit con. about sponsors. <laughs> yeah, just saying about how UFC is the only one that you can't have your own sponsors. Yeah. But I reckon you'd be able to do it on Cage Steel as long as you give Dom 10%. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you can do what you want. You can fight, mate, you can, if you want to fight in a gi on Cage Steel, you can do what you want. I said to Brad, <laughs> like, so Brad Kittrick, he won the amateur title that night. But when his, when his fight photo came up, you know, like front weigh-ins, and it said sponsored by Nando's, it's only vegan. <laughs> and it's, just, it's there sponsored by Nando's. I'm like, oh, nice one, mate, yeah. <laughs> sponsored by Fish Bits is quite potentially my favourite line. Fish out, Bits. Yeah. <laughs> this fight was brought to you by Fish Bits. I'm like, I'm in. I mean, it's going to be a belter, obviously, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, and uh, the winner just gets a nice big con. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Are you still a vegetarian? No, I'm. I'm an evidence-based diet thing, which means I just make it up when I don't want to eat something. <laughs> my birds made it usually like yeah. You just do whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'd say like vegetarian. I don't really eat, like red meat, and I'll eat a bit. Of, I'll eat more fish than, than chicken. But uh, that that game changing. It moved everybody over to like veganism. It moved me away from it. I'm like fuck you know. You know what I am? I need. I do need to watch it. Like what? I know it's. I was chatting some day a weekend bullshit. at Cage Steel, and they were saying, oh, "Have you listened to this podcast, which like debunks it all?" But I can't remember who it yeah, was. Yeah, I've seen people talking about it. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah, fair it well. is good. Oh, yeah, I, I, I listened to it on one of the many plane journeys, but I went on a podcast in America, and it was like, "Yeah, this game changes. It's gospel." And I'm like, "No, oh, it's not." <laughs> and there's like four people said, hey, "I've quit meat now. I'll never do that." Did you see his blood when he spin? I was like, "No, <laughs> it's not that." I understand you. You see his cock, it was loads bigger when he was. <laughs> but that just shows, if you show somebody, someone, and they like say, All right, I'm a doctor, this is a fact, everyone goes, All right, yeah, sound. Yeah, well, you're, yeah. A do- you're a doctor, aren't I you? I am an MMA doctor. <laughs> you're, you're an MMA doctor. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the Chechens call him. The doctor. I've even yeah. got like a doctor's. They give me a doctor's coat, like a long coat. <laughs> hey, see, be on the on the back. It's never seen the light of day. Surprisingly, I've tried to bring out a poke and and just get ripped. My ass all that stuff. Leave it at home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even blighting I have a hat I have a doctor's cat <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I was I lucky enough to true. go there last weekend actually um, yeah. and, and see everybody all again it was a, a, a bit of a different vibe from last time I've been there obviously the first time since um, the change of, uh, of branding and all that and ah, is it, so it's the first time you've been there when it's ACA yeah yeah my first time yeah. really being there and, and it's like strictly enforced and it's a little bit it's still the same people it, it feels a little bit different and, and uh, yeah interesting in it but good at the same time yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, man. So, so uh, Luke Barnett, he, he were fighting. Yeah, we had uh, Daniel Jackery, uh, yeah. Daniel Toledo, uh, and then uh, Luke Barnett, both both guys fighting in pretty valid fights. You know, Daniel fought a guy from Kyrgyzstan with the biggest Swede you've ever seen in your life, and then and then and then Luke fought a good kid, Corey Hendricks, and perhaps got a little bit caught up in in, in a bit of a jujitsu game, and rather than and playing a bit of striking, but a nice technical fight and and, and all that good stuff. And the big lad will be back anyway. He's just got too much to give to not be. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you just you're just everywhere, aren't you? Like dog like, shit, mate. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah dog been, shit. Yeah, on every been. corner. <laughs> ah, and this, uh, I've been on for three days. This is the second longest I've been on for like six months up to now. Yeah. yeah. So it's like it's good to be back. I'm, I'm, I've got one more flight this year, and then that's it. So I'm happy to be on. Like I've not been on since August. So we went to UFC Abu Dhabi. Straight from there, went to I like did Frank Mir camp in, in Las Vegas for seven weeks, and then straight from there to Spain for five weeks for that camp, and then and then home now on Sunday. Open the gym on Monday, and then. Away you go, mate, yeah? Living ah. the dream, eh? Yeah, living the dream. Literally, though, literally, though, and, and, yeah. and like, very cogni- cognizant of that, like, this is generally, yeah, well, yeah. if I had nothing to do, I would do this, so I'm, I'm dead fortunate, I don't take it for granted any 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 second of the day, so just doing what you love, isn't I it? I said the same to you this weekend, you now, like, obviously when he's going into his into fights and he's matching, like, he did it at Sheffield Arena, he's matching these fights, it's all fall, the world's falling around, apart around him. He's running AVT and then he's like, oh, I've got a fight as well. I'm going to do bare knuckle. Comes around again. He's dying for two weeks, still running the gym, still matching fights, still got a boxing match. Up until like that day, I'm like, really? Are you sure you want to be fighting? He's like, ah, I'll be all right. He gets in and fights, running around, cornering everybody. I'm like, you are living the dream. And you've even said it. You're like, yeah, you know, like fucking lives and but breathes like, it. Do you know what it is, right? Matchmaking, running an event and then cornering eight lads like we always do we always have like if I put an event there's like ten lads on of ours and Danny's the same yeah. that's really hard but to, have to stay switched on and have a fight at the end of it 
I, I, that that is something different. Do you know what I mean? So my heart's always up for Danny. Do you know and he I mean? makes it look effortless as well. Like I've been in your corner twice now. For your last two fights, I've watched you do it, and you make it look like. You, but, you, were, you were came out and you were saying, "Oh, I can't breathe this," but you make it look absolutely. Piece some of people are like. I'm not blowing smoke with ass to say, but some people just approach it differently and then yeah. it becomes easy. Yeah. Whereas if you approach it as a big thing, it becomes everything. And then if you lose, then ev you've lost everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas with Danny, it's just a, a, it's a big part of who he is, but it's a small part of what's important because he's lost before and he knows that it doesn't really matter. Yeah, and he's yeah. won and got big accolades before and he's seen that it's quite empty too. So we just fucking enjoy the process. And I think that's what you pass down to the lads, isn't uh, it? That's it? We could see it at BKB, you know, like when we're, we were warming up in that little room and we've got music on, everyone's just, we're laughing and joking. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's funny, isn't it? Yeah. It's like a laugh. And, you, and, and like you probably think that's normal. I do. Well, all, all I've ever known in the corner, right, is been with Danny or with Rico. Like it's proper chill, music's playing. Everyone's having a laugh. Like it's. You could bet. It wasn't until like for Rico's fight, just at the end, everyone started shadow boxing. Everyone. I'm not even a fighter and I'm shadow boxing. And I'm like, <laughs> right, that, was that Danny good. where I was after though? <laughs> well, it's, no. good, it's good time now. <laughs> But it's proper chill, but like you said, like other fighters were coming in and you could see them like fucking proper intense. Well, yeah, if yeah. you walked out of the room where we were warming yeah. up and there were people warming up there and everyone were like really serious, like, right, you know, if this guy, if this guy hits you with this punch, you need to do this and it's... Yeah. And yeah. we're cut from the same cloth. We're pretty laid back about it all, yeah. but I approach it like there's four different mentalities. You get a martial arts mentality, you get like a fighter mentality, you get an athlete mentality, and then you get a competitor mentality. And I think we're like a cross session of all four. We're not to put ourselves into a box yeah. where some people, they like be very straight up martial arts, hierarchy, we're doing this. And the sensei's at the end of the match saying like three arm bars and stuff yeah. like that. And I just think like you're putting too much emphasis on the fight. Whereas it's like, we're <coughs> no one's making anyone, no one made Danny go in that ring of uh, the cage and have a fight. He yeah. chose to do it. So the fact that he chose to do it is volunteer and everyone's just there to support rather yeah, than yeah. like what people do in the change room. They try to impress themselves on you. So they're like, at the end of the fight, they'll be able to tell the mate, say, you know, in the one when I showed him that little cartwheel pass, did you see him do it in the fight? And I just think you're doing it for your own ego. Yeah. And it yeah. like, That's we, really valid, we, we yeah, lost yeah. our ego really. Yeah. Had it punched out of us by life. You know, I mean, when you're born ginger, you, you lose your <laughs> ego by about seven years old and, and all that. And if you walk, if you're walking about with like, as long as he had that mullet, mate, if you can rock that for 20 odd years like he did, you've, you've obviously it's don't Jay, take yourself right, too actually. seriously. <laughs> you know what I mean? That is one thing that I think, I think probably on like one of the first podcasts when we had Jay on and I said that, I said like, oh, I started training at AVT doing a bit of jujitsu and I didn't, ex I didn't know what to expect, but I'd come from like a rugby background, so... Lots of egos, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that's not really that wasn't really my thing. I, I can't really, lighting each other's farts. Is it yeah, I just couldn't really buy into it. Like, but then when you go to the gym, I sort of expected it to be full of egos, a bunch of hard notes. And there's don't get me wrong, uh, nine out of ten gyms, yeah. are a bit like that. Maybe not nine out of ten, maybe fifty percent. Maybe that's a little yeah, bit. But like at AVT, it's just don't matter race, religion, whatever. Everyone just gets on, cracks on, and everyone's chilled out. I think yeah. you're a, you're a product of your your leader. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. Completely agree yeah, so yeah. whatever water trickles downhill, and like straight away, the, the reason Danny and I are so close because we helped each other out last minute like say for, if I ever lost fights I, the first person I would always ring would be him because I know that he's not taking the, the results so he just knows that the process is what's important yeah. I've had Rico and like back in the day Morgan Stark he take fights on like six hours notice on a Kagler fought like one of the UK's <laughs> top guys in like four four hours notice so we like it's, and but other people are like oh no but what if we lose and we lose to Cal yeah. Prince and his team and they put themselves above the above yeah, yeah. the fight and like, if you ask lots of fighters they would just fight but if you ask the coaches they wouldn't fight Danny and they're not even fighting Danny mm. do you know what I mean and we all know the names you know what I mean yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But so it's it, it just it's just what you value is important and what you value is what actually is important it's just the sport and getting better isn't it yeah 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 that's that's interesting, yeah, yeah. yeah there's lo loads of people out there it's they want to like protect the protect the record their gym, and they put the things up at the gym we've had 80 fights and 178 but I, I could show you a message where they've turned down 178 so yeah, it's yeah. like it is fighting and, and, and this fighting and they're not like casting the but everyone no one's perfect you know, we, we're on the same thing and I think like, everyone like pour shit over like the journeyman but it's bullshit see like every fighter is different some people are confidence fighters and they have to feel that they're invincible so if you have to give them a few little building blocks along the way I've, I've given them the licks in the gym but in fights in front of the mates and in front of the family and stuff like that you have to make them believe that they're invincible because it believes the most important thing in fighting and if you remove that from somebody just to say we don't fight journeyman because we're this and we're that that usually means a you don't sell tickets and you don't understand how the business works and b it's your ego again we don't fight journeyman for my ego because I'm above that but nobody's above that because ultimately you've got two arms two legs and that guy's trying to end you in it if I yeah. thought John Spencer walked in there with like a joint hanging out my mouth I'm going to get chinned that I know he makes yeah. look at Ash Gibson you know what I mean he's <laughs> like 
obviously there's different levels of journeyman isn't there? there's, there's, there's the lowest level where literally the guy's just going to go in and fall over when he gets hit but then people like Ash who get in there and they try to win yeah, and, yeah. and they have that danger element of like they can bang you out with that yeah, one yeah. shot yeah if, if you don't watch Ash Skipson and you let your fighter move left you're going to lose off that first double jab <laughs> over and right it's yeah. just what happens in it I get you whoop. but yeah, we've seen good fighters get hit by it yeah. like one of my mates has fought him three times and as much as I said don't left he must got hit by about 40 times like yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's mad like you got, I've got a lot of respect for him yeah, yeah. Him, but again he's, he's, he's all about players so his game yeah. is a badger mate he is isn't he we've flown him out to Romania between us we've flown him out to yeah. Romania all these places and don't even ask who's fighting and that it's just after about the after party but he's here he's, it, he's it, fucking when he turned yeah. up for BKB I was like this because I've, I've watched him on a couple of risks now the he's, he's doing well in bare knuckles he's recording bare knuckles 8-5-1 and one. Bare knuckle fights. I, I remember his first. We was at his first one. He fought my mate in the first one. It was that was the draw. Yeah. And I swear to God, right, it was in a car park in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and I had to get the guy who let you in. And it started raining as he came out. But it was the best show I've ever been to in my life. I put shows on at the Manchester Arena. I've been to like Japan and been to all. But that was the best <laughs> event. I've, it was like being in like you know what school? You know when everyone knew they were going to be a big scrap and that. And right. Everyone started spinning, like, spinning them and all that, like spit bucket and all that. But it was just like that in a car park. They <laughs> had this ring that was like unbalanced because we were like in a flat car park and they proper went to war like uh, they dropped each other and it was honestly the best fight I've ever been to in my life well, uh, it was kind of like with Eco and Sweeney you know because yeah, yeah. it was just like because we were just on that stage like they're ringing that bit that, <laughs> small platform isn't it so it's not like you're like yeah, you're sat, right above it. You were yeah. literally like kneeling down. And there's about a fa- there's like a five or six foot drop behind you. Yeah. And if you watch like, like oh. and then there's like blood squirting and everything. Like, Fuck it out. That's, what, like that's why we fell in love with it. We, yeah. Like fighting to me, I, I still love it, but it's a bit over sanitized now at the top level. I like fighting me and the, the rawness of it because ultimately that's what draws us to it from yeah. however young you were. I, like think, having... uh, I think that's why BKB. It's like when they put a show on, they sell out every time. Yeah. And it's not because it's they're niche. selling tickets. Yeah, yeah. It's like people are calling up and just buying tickets, just just random people. It's real fact. Like, I know a lot of people. I got back in like when Pride was real, do you know what I mean? And that, all my friends come from that era and all that. And they like say, oh, like they really want to see Valley Tudor. They want to see bare knuckle yeah. boxing. They want to see all this because it, it's kind of moved a little bit away from what we fell in love with in the first instance. Now everyone's got a uniform on, they all, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, you can pretty much guarantee that, that women fights are going to go with the disc. It's pretty formulaic a little bit, whereas you take it back and strip it back. It's a fight, isn't well, it? Well, that, like, that's why I put a post out before of Cage Deal about that, like, the, sh- the showmanship, that what you see on telly, the media, like, the UFC, it's an, like, it's a spectacle, it's a massive spectacle, you don't, you don't acknowledge that they're actually fighting in there. Yeah, yeah. You watch Conor McGregor versus whoever, like when he first started coming out and the, it's all this cinematic stuff and he's strutting around the ring. You don't really acknowledge he's in a fight. Yeah. Even when like when he knocked out Eddie Alvarez and then that combination, it looked amazing, but it didn't even almost look really like a video game. Yeah. So you don't acknowledge it as a fight. Went to risk the first time. <laughs> and we're in like a shed in Morley <laughs> and there's blood shed everywhere. How dare you? That's the gym. In fact, it were, it were the, it, I think the one that stood out the most were um, Ash Gibson, like... Did he, he fought Matt he Hodgson. Fought Matty Hodgson so Matt Hodgson like, yeah, splattered yeah. his nose all over the place, bare knuckle, and I was filming it, and I'm like, "What the fuck is going on here?" You know, and I'm like, "This is amazing." blood everywhere. Because yeah. I think Matty like is yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, but, but Matty Hodgson's got that look like. <laughs> oh, yeah. Are you looking? Think, oh, he's gonna have a read them right in here. That's just what you're seeing. If you yeah. see blood coming down his face, and that's Gibson never sat. I want to watch that. Dude, like, that that's what yeah. I'm into. I so. uh, like that happened. Um, young. Dan Foster. head kicked, oh, head kicked yeah. Hodor into another that, dimension. That, that you see him kill that. him. He killed the guy. I bet after he was like, I can't believe that even happened. And, uh, <laughs> the, 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 wor- the, the worst, I've said this before, but the worst thing about that is I went up to Darren Moffat because he saw this guy out, this last minute standing. And I'm like, who the fuck have you brought here? The guy, like, who is this fucking idiot who you've brought? And he went, it's his son. And then, the, the lad's dad was stood next to him. And I was like, all right, all right, pal. And he's like, I'm the promoter. He's like, I've, he said, I've, he needs to start training. He said, I, I bought him a multi gym at home, but he hadn't used it. It's like, sound. But where, like, I saw the only monster give you a bit of chirp on that. Has he been stealing his, uh, have you been stealing his journey? Oh, you can't it. break the cold, mate. Yeah. <laughs> You can't. The only ones that are going sick. I can't. I, know, I, I don't know if I can use him anymore because the the that smackhead that he brought. <laughs> <laughs> I'm away and people are ringing me like, 
fucking hell, he's brought some kind of smack head to fight here. Like, the guy <laughs> looks off his head. But he's like, reinvent- how many shows back in there, Darren Moffat and me, like, you know, later, it's like, yeah, he's going to save me day. I think <laughs> I ring Brad Conway, like, Brad, have you got any mates? And I should have known straight away what a terrible conversation to start with. He's like, yeah, I've got this guy, Darren Moffat, he's going to come on. I'll be there like nine o'clock, he's supposed to be fighting in two hours, and he'll be like, yeah, yeah, I'm on my way, mate. And, you're not. Just tell me you're not coming, it's fine. <laughs> Bad, isn't it? But yeah, back to what you said, like them them shows are how what you're there to see, aren't they? Like to see them raw, like them these local shows, like anybody I, I put it out on, on Facebook, anybody that's interested in martial arts, Bell, like you watch Bellator, UFC, all the stuff on telly, go see a, a local show for real. It's a different world. When you can hear the thud of the kick to a fit a skull or whatever, that's what makes it. And not, hear that clap of yeah. the machine again. Someone's yeah. dead and it just goes quiet for a minute. Yeah, everyone's like, are they dead? Is Sign he dead? me up. I mean, is he dead? So, <laughs> and that's what you'll get out of the small old shows. I've always been a big fan of small old shows, really, because you get like a more organic atmosphere. You go to these arenas and I think what you gain because of the gravitas of looking around and you lose in, in terms of atmosphere. And I think if I was to go to an MMA event for the first time, it'd be at an arena. I don't know that I'd want it. I'd like to go again. I think it is much better in the small old, but obviously it's the entertainment business, isn't it? So, yeah. Yeah, that's it. And it's like, uh, obviously, KSW, <coughs> we've got K- uh, Scott Askham fighting yeah. Kalidov this weekend. So, Hugh, probably one of the biggest fights I've ever been involved in. You know, I'm going to be at corner. Uh, I fly out tomorrow, but uh, fucking hell, they put on amazing shows. Unbelievable. The, Unbelievable. the best weigh-ins I've ever seen. <laughs> It's an event, isn't it? It's yeah. like, because I, I, I respect where Bellator are coming from now. I think they've understood that they can't compete with the UFC in terms of, of grand of grandeur. So they've gone more like of an entertainment route and they've, they're really carving out the niche. Yeah. And like with the Bellator Europe thing, they've like snaffled up a few of the of the good free agents and stuff like that. So in the background, they're actually building a good roster for a couple of years' time. I've been to all the events before I went to the UFC as the corner. And there's levels to this game, like there really is. And, and then when you go to the UFC, it's like the machine. And I know they've been doing it for 25 years and they should be really good. Yeah. But they like much surpass my, I don't know if your experience is the same, but much surpass my expectations. It's like, there's not a question that they don't, as a promoter, there's not a question that they don't have an answer for. And yeah. like, it, it really, really good. I was really impressed by me. Like yeah, that. yeah, they, they are like that. But yeah, I mean, for me, like KSW, it's super well organized as well. But then they've just got this, like a different vibe. I don't know. See, watching to get that. the biggest, I think they had the well, we t- spoke about before, didn't we? The second biggest crowd yeah. ever in for MMA. What fifty thousand? Did we, did we find well, out? at Wembley? No, this was it was an arena in Poland, wasn't it? You know, the big super arena. Oh, yeah. So what was the first Pride? At it was Pride time? Shockwave. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but and it is a real event, but it's like the national sport, you know. Having yeah. like I've had Luke's fought in Poland twice now against Polish guys, and yeah. it's, they, every like, he's a bigger celebrity there than he is here. Like it's, he's actually quite famous here. Do you only know, walk for like round Manchester, but in Poland, it's like insane. Obviously, yeah. he's fought Khalidov and, and and all these guys, so that'll put you on on a platform. Mm. But it really like part of their popular culture. Like I've. I generally think, and I've been saying this for a while, but I think next year there's going to be like a big breakthrough in terms of MMA. There's like quite a lot of, obviously there's quite a lot of people investing in it now that are throwing money at it, but there's there's probably like 20 people now waiting in the wings coming from all over, especially like the, the Gulf states that are looking to put on their own events and throw big money at it. Oh, so yeah. it's going to be like a yeah, good yeah. market to be a free agent, like the, the former retired Danny Mitchell. I, I, I don't even know, but I cornered him in his retirement fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know it's that he fought. Technically, I'm sat there, I also <laughs> Technically from MMA, I am still retired because I've not fought MMA. Technically. See, so, this is the thing, isn't it? Go. Technically. There you go. <laughs> Valley 2, though, that's the way forward. Well, it's funny you should say that, mate. Yeah. yeah. De- definitely going to happen. Valley 2, though, fight. This year. No, next year. This year? Where are we? Yeah, I'm going to say this year. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. This, year, this next 12 months, then. Yeah. 2020. Yeah. Did you want to just brief, briefly brush over the last uh, few fights at Cage Steel? Um, obviously, Bramold. Bramold's fight, how do you think that one went? Yeah, Br- Bramold's fight was sticky for Deck Williams. Deck's, uh, yeah, you know. Dangerous. Yeah, a he's dangerous. With both fans, he's, isn't he's, it, yeah. yeah, he's been around. Uh, Deck were fighting amateur back when I was fighting amateur on these oh, little yeah, shows yeah. in Donny and that, you know. So him, him and his brother. Uh, Three of them, weren't they? Well, they sh- yeah, there's Sean, James, yeah, James Declan, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but yeah, sick. So it was good, good to get him Good to get him back on, you know, back in the area. I ain't, I ain't seen him for a long time. And uh, it was a good fight for Bram, a tricky fight. He's, yeah. You know, I think he caused, caused Bram a few problems. Like he, he's, Bram works well just against like orphan, orphan.
how many rounds within this tie boxing that he wants to it, and it's so awkward isn't it, when you fight someone that gives you a different like rhythm a different time yeah like, that's it like that kept switching stance and like how he moves a little bit different so but I think just from watching from the outside looking in like Bramall's always had a good talent and and then like, you can see he's a bit more invested in it now and he believes now where he never used to believe did he yeah he never, it. it's like you were talking about before about his confidence thing it's like Bram, Bramall's when his confidence builds, he fights better. And I think that's that's what's been happening with these fights. And especially off the back of that uh, Fernando oh, Flores fight, yeah. fight in Sweden. And he's tough as nails, Flores. Like, we've had Jonas fight him. Obviously, he beat Menga. So that's a really valid win. And yeah. I, I come from a different uh, standpoint because I, I used to teach in different sports before this and, and, like, and teach kids. So, like, winning is a massive, important part of development. But, like, we're going into it as adults. And we're like, Does that makes sense. So you, you do have to foster the way, not for all. It's not like one rule for all. There's some guys who like that got that that they don't need to build confidence. They're already super confident. But there's some people that you can draw the best out of by giving them the right fights at the right time. And I think now it looks like it's Bramall's time. He's in like a shallow weight class and, and he's right at the top of it domestically. So Yeah. Looking forward to seeing what he does this year, mate. Yeah, that's it. We'll get get a couple more fights and then uh go from there. But he'll probably fight he'll probably headline the March card at K Steel. Yep. I'll probably fly someone in for him. Yeah. Get him get him an international and then uh, they, want, they wanted him back in Sweden but loads of shows on like that's what I'm saying there's a mad influx of shows at like February, March and stuff like that like, we've been looking for a date to put ours in but it's like four shows on a day and then it's my mate's show so you don't want to put shows on the same day and then yeah. you can you, there's not, the, the pool's the pool it's not getting much bigger And but then there's more shows coming pulling away and here's a question for you, for you guys then so someone like Bramble is obviously on a win streak he's doing really well he's, he's getting to the top, top of the tree at what point and how how does the transition go to the bigger promotions? Like how does it how does how does it one transition from like cage have not, steel? Have you not been on the internet, mate? The only way you can get to the UFC is you go on Cage Warriors. No, it's not that. Um, <laughs> so so all it is it's about it's about taking. It, uh, sorry to jump all over that, Dan. Your question, no, no, there, mate, crack on. It, It's about like having a plan, and, yeah. and Dan has a plan. Yeah. With, with with regards to you guys and like we we got we went the unfamiliar route with Lerone and got him on on the UFC by picking the right fights to get you to get you seen and just staying in communication with the people like Danny's like good friends with the Bellator matchmaker he's good friends with and like between us we know everybody and yeah, if yeah. he doesn't know him I know him and then we we'll just share all ideas and yeah. then like. I've got a quite a decent relationship now with Shelby. I'm sure you have through through the case. I like he'll reach out to me and ask for guys. So it's like it's it's a question of. For me, Bramall, he gets a couple of fights. It's not a quick, it's a question of yeah. when, isn't it, really? Because when you look at Bramall now, like when you look at the the real rankings, not topology that they just made up, that there is other rankings out there. But when, when you look at them, everyone above him is signed either to Bellator, UFC, or Cage Warriors. Yeah. So the, his only option now, in in my mind, is we need to fly someone in. Yeah. You know, get some international opposition who are, who are ranked, but. You know, obviously not in the UK because there's no unless he signs to Cage Warriors now. There's nobody in the UK who can really fight. Yeah, who's above him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I can fly someone in for him, like Carl says, get him a couple of wins, and then he's pretty much there. Really, I think he should fight that Luke Ivy in me. You know, like Italian kid, but we'll talk about it anyway. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Throw some names. No, yeah, thanks <laughs> for that. I mean, like th these are all like I've always been fascinated by. It. I, just, I wondered how the process works, and well, you wouldn't know. We're unless... dead lucky, mate. We just play fantasy MMA. Yeah, you know, yeah, and, yeah. And you get to see like occur usually, but like what Danny said at the start, you get to see it occur on a piece of paper, and then three weeks out, they all use like the best <laughs> fights you're looking for. Pull yeah. out. I used to, if I, I'm sure we could all like list the best. And everyone's in the UFC or Bellator now. Now we've had a match to fight one another, and like one one thing or another, yeah, like, yeah. one of them it's not occurred. So. Uh, it, it's tough, like, but yeah, like, so like, like Bram, you know, Bram's he's on the right track now. Do yeah. you know what I mean? If, like, I say a couple, couple of fights. If he wins, if he wins two more fights, he's ten and two, and he, he only lost those two losses were out of his first four fights. You know yeah. what I mean? So he's on mm. a six fight win streak now. You know, if he goes on an eight fight win streak against international opposition. We're pretty much there, I think, with him. Sweet. So one hundred percent. And and like, there is a website that that, that the UFC will look at. That, that they follow like, as just an algorithm website basically that, that put a ranking at MMA maths if I beat Danny uh, I'll be above Josh Goodson does that make yeah, sense yeah, it just yeah. all works yeah. in, in that way so and it, it, they, they kind of use that to look at like the quality of the opposition and stuff and, and that's kind of what we go off now so yeah. once once your name sort of crops up on there 
and which Bramwell's has, you know what I mean, after beating that, uh, Flores, yeah. you know, that that was a win really that sort of got yeah, him to... in there because Flores stole Menga's ranking, didn't he? Exactly, yeah, yeah. So Flores stole Menga's ranking and then, and then Bram beat him and then he just jumped levels by virtue of that, didn't he? So, he, it, uh, yeah, like so, said, so his name's in the mix now. So once, he, once your name's in that mix, then... You know what I mean? Then we can start building it. So uh, it's it's just about getting people to there, and, yeah. and not everyone can get there. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. And in terms of bantam weights, you've got so many good bodies for you to work with in within that gym, and everybody like uh, learning together and growing together. It's usually you, I call it catching lightning in a bottle. It's just how it works. It's like if you get four or fives that lose levels coming up at the same time, then their levels will just catapult like through the yeah. roof, especially with like good instruction and and that like that you have at ABT and stuff like that. So they're, they're really in, in good hands. It's uh, yeah, we're, we're like a bit of a northern alliance, you know, throughout. Oh, they all like yeah. go and train together and stuff like that and, and, and help each other rise at the same time so it's just that's good that as well isn't it? It. yeah you, you need that you need to you need that sort of cross training across different gyms and stuff a lot of people are sort of dead against it but well ego again ego yeah in my yeah. opinion i don't know that it is a holistic thing but ego again like what i've done just to jump subjects is like um we just i've been working at all powers uh jim just teaching there and it was something that came by chance really i was working with kane moose who just uh, teaching boxing like i would just call myself a padman really who, who just graduated into being like an mma coach but um so by virtue of that i got offered a job at all powers probably like four or five years before i would want to be a coach at a gym i had a plan of having my own gym and all that good stuff but i didn't really have a, a progressive mma career and all that business and i wanted to learn and and get like a bit of esteem in the community for doing the right thing so um by virtue of that, I know what I'm good at. I know what I'm not good at. Like, if you go to America, from traveling the world, you see these gyms and they're, they're class at one thing and, and, and there's a there's de in between yeah. the two arts. And MMA doesn't exist in boxing, Thai boxing, wrestling and jiu-jitsu. It exists somewhere in, the, in between. And if you understand that and meld all these arts together, and that's fine. But if you're an expert in one art and you'll see there's certain people who gra gra graduate and gravitate towards like what they're good at. And it's not yeah. about that. So um, what we've done now is all powers, uh, thanks to big shout to, to Panicus Yusuf, he gives us a home for a few years and then really pushed us towards getting our own home and building it out. And then we brought in the, like Magomed Shikshebekov, who's like a, a Dagestani XM1 champ, and he really looks after the like the grappling side of it and, and all that good stuff. So I, I believe that we're on, we're on a like a platform to something massive. Like I just gone off what what the likes of Danny have done really. Like Danny could quite easily. I think a lot of people because Danny's so unassuming. I've got a friend Aaron Wilkinson. They're like identical. They're like so unassuming. People forget. People forget how good they are. Yeah. Like Danny doesn't need anyone to teach wrestling. Doesn't need anyone to teach jujitsu. He doesn't need anybody to teach boxing. Because He's probably an expert in all three, whereas I would classify myself, this is a bit big, uh, being an expert in one. Yeah. So, like, you got to try and, like, because you obviously get found out. You go to the world stage, you get took down for three rounds, and everyone goes, oh, he needs to learn wrestling. I think, oh, shit. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? We knew that two, 12 years, 12 months ago, so you got to get, like, a bit of ahead of the curve. And, like, forward-thinking gyms like Danny's, like, Dean Garnett's in Liverpool, yeah, like, yeah. Andrew Fisher's up in Sunderland. I'm probably naming all my mates, but these are um, people who, like, think outside the box, but... Yeah. It's all about individual development, not the coaches and the, te and the you've team's that, development. You've said that before yeah, as well, yeah. yeah. And we, we need to get Dean on that because it, like, when he really talks about, like, he's really into his coaching and stuff. Yeah, isn't yeah. It? When, when he talks about it, it's, you know, it, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. You know, it's about being athlete centered, you know, it's about, you know, getting an athlete. And it, it's like this it's like, we've got like, Louis, say, we've got Louis in the gym, for example, yeah, he's training, but say, you know, at, at the minute we've got look at all the bantam weights we've got. It's per if you're a bantam weight, it's an ideal to be in my gym. Yeah, yeah. Well, say all them bantam weights disappear and we haven't got none, and Carl's gym's full of bantam weights, and it's like maybe that's the best place for him. Yeah, and if that's where he needs to go, do you know what I mean? I'd be like, well, we only learn by learning the hard way. We've been to a gym where you had like a round with a flyweight and a round with an heavyweight, and then it'd be you with your gloves on, thinking, right, I'll batter him, but yeah. I'm gonna get filled in in a minute, so that might be best to leave. But but that's the thing you seek out yourself, and it's just a process of elimination. Where now these guys are so. Blessed to be in a good position, aren't they? <coughs> Are you off? Oh no, no, we're dying, we're dying. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, Dean, Dean's a sick coach. No, because what I think this, and you probably echo the same. If if you go to a big gym and there's one coach and there's forty people on the mat, you're holistically going to get better by virtue of bodies and a little bit of instruction. But it's not for you, is it? It's for everyone. Yeah, yeah. And like, that's I, it. like I went to a gym where it's like holistic learning, and and I. I'm I'm a bit 
autistic. I'm on the spectrum at least, so I need to. I know how to learn for me, and everybody learns differently, don't they? Yeah, and and you've got to try and discover that and decipher it. And also, people want to be spoke to differently. If you tell me to do something, if I told you to do something, I know that you're not going to do it. But if I say, "Oh, Dan, do us a favor, mate. Love you, mate. We do this for it." it it's a. It's how you get the best out of people, isn't it? By knowing how, how to speak to them and speak about them and make them better, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think the, the nail on head when we were talking about coaching and now you know we're looking at like um, for MMA putting like some kind of coaching qualification yeah. together because he's really good with you know he has um, yeah, scholastically making it work like academically like yeah that. But, and and what I was looking at though is I'm I'm thinking about I'm thinking about techniques I'm thinking right you know all coach they need to know how to teach a sprawl how to teach yeah, yeah. A double leg and he's like nah nah Concepts. you got it wrong he says they need to learn how to actually coach a person yeah. he says coaching is the same across any sport you don't the techniques don't matter. Yeah, you know, because you can just learn yeah. them. I've I've coached seven sports now. Like I've coached three professionally, so it's like I I I I hundred percent agree. Yeah. It's all the same framework, and it's only a human in it. It's just yeah. how you can break down and and have like an analytical mind. And we've been pretty fortunate, like you with Chris Otter, to be with someone who can really break down things like that. And then the influence that you get within, like of how to speak to people, how to break down techniques, because it's not about techniques. It's about layers of understanding, isn't it? Yeah. And, and concepts, because it's about techniques. You could just watch a DVD, and you would know, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's it. It's, it's different. It's it's amazing, really. Do you know, it's, when you when you look the, into it and stuff, it's, it's really interesting. The best thing going, isn't it, man? Yeah, yeah. But that, that's I, I like. Been offered in the last couple of months some like really lucrative jobs. You know, but what I've dis- decided by being away from home and having a bit of time to myself is, whenever I've followed that, it's like made me like really unhappy because it's not me. I like to coach me and just be with the lads, and I'll, I'll never be a head coach really because I like to mess about too much and have a bit of, a bit of a joke yeah. and a laugh. Where that's what I always saw in football. I was never wanting to be a head coach; I wanted to be like an assistant manager, and that's what I did for a little while. But then when you can come back to this, and you can just—it's just good to if you show someone someone and then they do it. It's like the most rewarding thing ever outside having a fight yourself, yeah. and uh, I'm never really good at that, so <laughs> might as well just do this instead. <laughs> Yeah, but obviously you've been, you've been working with, like, he's mentioned it before, with Frank and that, yeah. you know, so you did his camp for Roy and Ellison. Roy and El- yeah, yeah, so, yeah. like, the second fight we've we, we done together, also the first fight that we, we came second in, but, but this one, like, really stuck to the game plan I got there, we dead refocused, and it's a dead big thrill for me, and my first ever fight, I, I came out to amazing, because that was Frank Mears June, and then in October last year, I conceived my uh, my twin daughters in his son's bed. So it's like, <laughs> it was quite, quite a roundabout situation, do you know what I mean? <laughs> However you get there. So yeah, thank you, Frank. Thanks for letting me jizz in your son's bed. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't there, by the way. He wasn't present while it all occurred. Roman <laughs> Cameron Oh, dear. Dear me. <clears throat> but yeah, Jim's up and running now. Manchester yep. top team. So the three days in, mate. Yeah, and like, I never, I never knew what like living. At, I call it now living at someone else's house. Do you know when you live at someone else's house, you're all right, but you don't really want to fart on the couch while the <laughs> missus are there, do you? Yeah. But like, I really enjoyed it. It was good. But do you know when you have your own place and all that, I'm like, we can really build a community and like, a bit of a lads club and and get some influences from other places yeah. and and then get the right people in there who are just on the same. Like Danny's coaching staff's class in it. There's not a lot of person on there that I don't like. So. So like we just want to get the same thing at our gym, mate. Yeah. yeah, it's the way forward. And then is is Brad is Brad Pickett he's setting something up? So so yeah, the reason it's not called the reason it's called Manchester <coughs> Top Team, not Great Britain Top Team, is because he had a premises uh, originally that that just fell through. And obviously with him being HQ, we decided like he asked and we agreed that he would be the first gym that would be called Great Britain Top Team and all that. So he's looking for a premises right now. But he, we have a grand opening like in January, January fifth, and Frank will be there. Brad Pickett, Luke. Uh, Danny Mitchell is going to smash his smash do like a self on, a self defence force seminar, yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, take a toilet roll <laughs> so so no nah, it, it it's like a dream come true and it, and, and it all happened like where I've not even been here so I'm dead thankful for everyone who who stepped up and and more so thankful for the lads who stayed loyal. They've had many ample opportunities to to go over gyms. In fact, I've sent them to other gyms and 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 respect to the coaches for helping us out as well, like taking people in and all that. Um, um, but like the loyalty that, that they give to us about staying loyal to us about when we didn't have a home and now they're all like under one roof it, it'll, it'll be repaid ad nauseum because it's going to be class like yeah 
Yeah, it's awesome. good. I, th- I think that's the best thing. Like when you when you, like I do that with my guys, I'll send them other places and stuff. But and that's when people come back to you. What did Ian Brown say? Keep what you got by giving it all away. But yeah. if you try to keep hold of it dead tight, it's like suppressing something, isn't it? It's just and also like the, if you're that arrogant that you think you know everything, and go away. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, it's not. It's impossible because even to put someone who's like Hicks and Gracie or whatever, Helio or Gracie, he might have invented the app. He doesn't know everything. You gotta like go and wake up, and also if you're too arrogant to not think that you can't learn off a white belt as much as you can off a black belt, it's just education and information. And maybe he just describes it in a way that like just clicks, and yeah. I call it like idea sex. From there, if you have idea sex and everything else like falls into place, then doesn't it a little bit? Yeah, man. Yeah, it's good shit. <laughs> but yeah, check check out. Uh, have you got? You've got on. You're on Instagram, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, Manchester in- top team. Yeah, Instagram, man. Facebook, uh, Manchester top team. About to get a website. It's just all like getting ready f- for January really. wanted yeah. to open our doors and get a bit of a yeah get bodies through the door yeah yeah, no. already. yeah 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 yeah. I think somebody did that for me actually I'm not guilty <laughs> not guilty so if anyone's not on there any of the fighters I do apologise you always want to miss someone out don't you <laughs> <laughs> yeah <coughs> sorry I'm fucking dying here yeah, thank dying. god Scott's got to sit in, in a weight cut in a, in a in an hotel room I'm going to try and avoid him as much as possible <laughs> until, until it's fight time <coughs> What, is, what are you doing to us here? Sorry, mate. Yeah. Coughing on us in a Happy in this Christmas, small everybody. Room. Yeah. Hey, C- Prince, you come and see me before I go to Poland and Thailand and over there, like in bed. I've got three kids yeah. like that. <laughs> Passing it around the house. Yeah, R- Rowan's done. He's done. Oh, is he? Has yeah. he got it? Is yeah, he yeah. contracted? Nah, it, to be fair, he's just got he's just got a cough. We've just got a cough. Is it? Is you know what we're not right? spoke about? Him being there on, on Saturday. Oh, yeah, what was yeah. that for you? I know I, I'll ask to get to it, but how was it for you? Like, would you feel any more pressure? Or, I know you don't nah, feel pressure, really. You know what it was like in my head. I was thinking, I can't be asked for this fight. I feel a little and that. And then uh, Jade just like messing around and says to Rome, "Oh, Daddy's fighting on Saturday." And he was like, "Oh, I want to watch." And then I was like, "Oh, no way!" Like I, I never thought about it before. I thought he's never seen me. He's he's been at show at the show when I fought when when he were a baby, or whatever. But obviously he didn't he didn't know what was going off. But now he like understands. You know, he can watch. I thought, fuck it, that'd be cool. You know, just to let him let him watch because I might not. I might not fight, like, especially in Doncaster, I might not fight in Doncaster again, you know, yeah. I might, who knows what'll happen next year. Yeah, I match a show there three times a year, but I might not fight there <laughs> yeah, again. Yeah, Another yeah. Another retirement, here we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> done, I've done it, completed it. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so he wanted to watch, so I thought, fuck it, you know, yeah. I'll get him there. He, had his, he put his little suit on and that. Looks and smart, eh? Uh, yeah, yeah. And he enjoyed it, he was buzzing, he was sat with Rico. He was gutted when Jack lost, obviously Jack lost the decision. Yeah. And they were, he was saying, Jack wasn't Jack wasn't the winner. And he was like really upset. Is that because he's his real dad? I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jack, after the fight, Jack put a suit on as well. Oh. So they looked like, I, I should have got a picture. I was like, fucking hell. Rowan in his little suit and Jack in his. It looked funny. Yet, huh? No. <laughs> yeah. See, but the, that's, it's going to be so natural for him. Like other kids would be so intimidated in that, that environment. And then you see him up, like face close to the cage and all that. And you just uh, like, that's all I want my girls to have that instill of no matter where you go, you feel comfortable and you feel yeah. that you can, you, f- you don't ever feel out of your depth comfortable. in situations. Roman what first went into cage and went and kicked the other guy in shin and yeah, jabbed him. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, see I'm that? surprised he didn't pull his kicks down <laughs> out of his I've been, I've spent enough time with him that he'll know that he's, <laughs> he's cut from the same cloth as his dad. Yeah, yeah, don't you worry about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. he ran straight up to, he ran straight up to that jack and booted him <laughs> It was funny. Yeah, you got, like, Josh got, you've seen the video, haven't you? You got a good video. I just, I've only seen a picture of him, like, in the cage. Ah, uh, yeah, that, so Josh oh, did, yeah. A, did, did a video, and it's basically just a video of Roman watching me fight. It's, like, about two minutes oh, long. So, so the full, so I, I brought the camera out. I, I was just coming to watch it. I thought, I'll bring the camera down. Cause Dangerous, I, these people who walk about the camera. Every, we've, we've got a bit of footage of some, aren't we? And, and yeah. I knew Danny, I didn't know if we were going to fight, I didn't know if he was stressed. He was obviously sick as fuck as well, anyhow. Like, I said, do you want me to record some stuff? And you're like, yeah, crack on. So I just got some of him getting his hand wrapped and then Roman were there and it were like, we did the walkout and I thought, there'll be enough footage of him walking out to fights. So I walked out behind Roman. So like straight down, like back as he yeah. came out, you know, down to cage, gives Danny a kiss, stands outside at cage, got his reaction, sat on Jade's knee 
And then the whole He's fight. He's like clapping yeah. and like, yeah, like the whole well. fight behind Roman. And then obviously Roman going into the cage afterwards just kind of followed the whole thing. So like, I've got loads of footage to but give to you. But to document that, that's it's unbelievable. like Roman's point of view. Yeah. yeah, it's POV for that. It's unbelievable yeah. that I've got three girls, man. I'd really like a son. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> you just can go through all that process of, of, of doing that. Like imagine like the big Pete where he took you to all these different places. If you had that, yeah. had that documented for you, it just means loads, doesn't it? I, so like, I just find, to get all I that. find like that with this whole that journey doing podcasts and getting to know Danny and, and going to these shows and that, I, I've always found like UFC embedded and stuff more fascinating than the fights. Yeah, yeah. I, I care more about the people and the stories than I do about the fights really. Like I enjoy watching fights, but I think it is proper fascinating seeing the people. Behind. We need to foreshadow. There's no story if there's no story. Yeah, and like doing this, I, I think this is, I just find it, I find it ace. So when I got the opportunity to be able to record at risk or record behind the scenes at recuts, like we've got to release recos, like second sort of documentary yeah, yeah. series. And I, I just, I think people buy into it more. And you know what? It's marketing, isn't it? So st storytelling, like I, I, you can see Bram is going to be a star. Like I think he's ace. I think he's the funniest guy yeah, ever. He's box office, isn't he? He's just an yeah. idiot, isn't it? So like, like we got some good stuff at the last cage deal with Bram. This time even better stuff. So we've made this video and it's gone mad like a pro last night. It's got a few thousand views already. Yeah. It's been shared all over. And there's like loads more footage that we can, you know, there's more to do with it. But I just think people buy into it more, you know? But this beauty that we're all rising together in it. Like yeah. the, you've just mentioned Louis, Rico, yeah. like, you know, that win was unbelievable, mate. Congratulations. I don't know if I've even told you. That. <laughs> yeah. Just We were watching it over in space. Just amazing, mate. And, you know, just to see it all, like, all unfold differently and um, everyone speaking about it. And, yeah. and you really come like, and, and that that's amazing. And then, yeah. like, Bram rising up. Yeah. And then some one of my guys about to get on Emmerdale. We've got guys signed for the UFC. We've got, obviously, Dan's going to go away for a big fight in KSW. Yeah. And, and it's just good times, good people. And I don't think that's what I'm saying about understanding that how blessed and how grateful that we are. We don't take any of this for granted because it can go tomorrow, can't it? But like, while yeah. it's happening now, we're just going to enjoy it. It's, it's been, amazing, it's been it? a top year, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, I think just doing this for a year has been like a proper privilege, being able to go around, around back and just see everything. And like, after this weekend, like Mark DeCasey messaged me as well, didn't he? Saying like, oh, I think he works good. We should have a chat. And it's like all these people, obviously from our gym, we see them anyway. Small community, isn't it? Like, yeah, like we see them anyway. So. You can come down to us. We'll, 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 we'll have some business here, but we can come down to ours and do some stuff. We're all like expanding, like growing together. Yeah, so, yeah. and then when someone says what works and you just do a good job. So if you do a good job, it's a small community. I've got a mate and like Danny knows we've all got mates. So like say, oh, I've got this guy who'll do that for you. And yeah. oh, we've got, we'll, we'll, cause you've got to delegate because you can't do everything, but we yeah. want to do, we never say no to anything. So you have to like get trusted people along that, that come along for the ride. And like yourself, you, you see that this is the best life. The way yeah, when yeah. I'm at a fighter's hotel, I think I'm just at school with my mates. Yeah. I've, I've smashed it. I didn't ever want to leave school because it's not about your pals all the time. Yeah, now you yeah. go on tour with him. And I've been at Luke Barnett. Luke Barnett's one of my top mates. I've been at his house for four weeks just playing darts and padding him twice a day. It's the good life. Yeah. And then at the end of it, it's Pajian. I just think, I, I, I would have done that for yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And, don't, and then and then the same thing with Frank. Like, you just go around and knock it. And it's just, it, it's a really, really good life. It's, it's amazing, quick, isn't it? Quick work, become a ninja. It's, it was the best thing I ever did. <laughs> yeah. I just never had a job to no, quit I'm not. first place. I'm not. I've never had a job either, like, yeah. <laughs> So it's, it's a good great, place to come it? from. It's great. But yeah, everyone everyone, at show, everyone I bumped into at show were all saying about Rico's fight because there's loads of people I've not seen since it and they're like saying, oh, the best thing about a fight is that Rico got put down. Like yeah. that made it. Yeah, of course, it's this that drama. Totally. Made yeah, yeah. It. It's amazing. You're like a Rocky but, film. Yeah, yeah. Everyone like, oh, you know, if... If, if he hadn't got knocked down, it wouldn't have been as good, you know, because he got knocked down. It was like, fucking hell. I just like, it was so very well taught for that fight. And it's all right going being well taught, but you know, doing it against... And being so chilled out doing it, it just spent so much time. Yeah, that's, it, that's, it, that's what it is. Like, we were sat there in a the hotel room before, weren't we? So, like, what, a couple of hours out from fight, and he sat, like, literally in his bed, just, like, flicking through YouTube. Everyone just sat talking, chatting shit. Yeah. And then it was, like, get to the event, got there, everyone was chilled out, and he goes and does it. And after, like, I'm sat next to, like, stood next to uh, Mateus, second round, and he's like, he's fucking doing it. He's doing it. <laughs> and I'm like, fucking hell, he's doing it. I can't, like, we, no one can believe it. <laughs> Too good to be true. And that's when he got knocked down. And it was like an absolute, like, like a fucking he's Hollywood film. He's sick Mateus in corner. You know, like, when he's in like, Italy, we're nearly fighting with everyone in that. <laughs> Like running in there, I was like, maybe we've got to chill out. <laughs> so, nah, but the, the way he bossed you, like just as a technical standpoint, like from hand controls to, to feints, he like out Sweeney, Sweeney. Like, I think if he would have gone out there, like who was it not to Mount Gillard? It was one of the MMA fighters anyway, weren't it? From America. Who was it came over and beat Sweeney? He, I don't, he didn't knock him out, did he? But he beat that Julian Lane. Yeah, Julian Lane, but he gave him a big shot. Like yeah. if, if, if Rico would have knocked him out, I'd be like, oh yeah. Brilliant. If Rico's knocked him out, he never like knocked poor shit on a knockout as a striking coach, especially. But for him to win in the manner that he did, and and and, and in just six boxing fights, no pro boxing background, no real amateur boxing yeah. background, and uh, just shows you, I think, that MMA 
fi- it does translate over a little bit better into BKB, yeah. doesn't it? Because that's it. Distance. When he did that prize fight, they're all good like amateur boxers and stuff like that. We're fighting, so. Yeah. I'm, I think Matt's making a big bare knuckle show in America next year as well. So uh, yeah. I'm sure I'll be tapping you up for some names. Oh dear. Yeah. Oh, oh, dear. <laughs> World exclusive there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's blowing up, isn't it, bare knuckle? Yeah, I think so. If all these big promotions start paying MMA money, I think it could dwindle away. But that, boxers have got to go somewhere to go now, aren't they? And if boxers are going into it now a little bit and taking it seriously because boxers are losing, aren't they? Malinagi being beat off Lobo, that's in boxing. It's like quite unbelievable, isn't it? I know, yeah, crazy. Crazy shit. We're living in fucking crazy times. Everyone's saying, oh, do you think Khabib will fight Mayweather? I'm like, fucking hell. Anything could happen. <laughs> we live in a time where literally anything could happen. And yeah. it will, won't it? There's just two, like, from being in Abu Dhabi and seeing the in- injection of money from, from like, obviously from anything from the Caucasus, Russia to, to the Gulf states. The, the money is mental, isn't it? We're going to see this weekend, or next weekend, is it Joshua? Or is, it next, is it this weekend? Next Seventh, weekend? Uh, this yeah. weekend? This weekend, yeah. This weekend yeah. Yeah. So we're going to see craziness there right, in Riyadh, aren't they? The stadium's going to be sold out. And all uh, that. Who do you reckon is going to win? Ru- Ruiz wins that. Ruiz, yeah. yeah. I think Ru- he's going to stop him. Mid-rounds, like six six to eight. Uh, you know what? Like Everyone's saying, oh, you know, we're from UK, let's get behind Joshua, but I've never liked him. I don't know what it is. Him. He's not like yeah. us, though, is he? Like, if you speak know. to Tyson, you, you've got an affinity with him because he's one of the boys, whereas him, like, it it's a, it's fake and I, you can see through the fact that it's a bit of a fake persona yeah. that he's put on yeah. and then obviously when you speak to people who genuinely know him it is fake and it's like real recognises real if that makes sense and I just think that that I want Ruiz to win he's one of the he speaks like he's one of us more yeah. so than and he's the fat guy as well like me yeah. <laughs> like us all mate a bit of a bit of a bit of Anymore, though, yeah, he has lost oh, weight, but oh, that might be him. No, I'm not sure about that's a good yeah, idea. It's, a bit, it's like when uh, you know Phil Taylor, darts yeah. player, he got power. A, yeah, he lost the power, he lost loads it? of weight, and then he went <laughs> shit at darts. He's like, fucking, yeah. I'll get fat again. He got, he got like a he got like a, he got like a fitness coach, didn't he? he got like a personal trainer, and then he had to sack him. him. He had to sack him off because he was fucking it threw off his fucking arrows. That's it. Heavy's in that. No, but um. I, I really rate Ruiz though. I rate him as a boxer, and like, he, he's sharp. I, and I just he, like his this, movement I like, inside. I like him for the same reason. I like Tyson. It's like that relaxed yeah. flow. Whereas, but he's a stiff top. I know everyone says he's a stiff top, doesn't move his head, but he's kind of gone backwards for me. Like he puts his weight down on the floor. He's got like a low left hand. Whereas before, when he was like just working behind the jab off the back foot, that double jab. No one wants to get it with that double jab right hand. You spin your head round, wouldn't it? But like now, he's got a low left hand. He's not really moving backwards. He's trying to have a fight. It's obvious he's trying to land a big right hand. Uh, Whereas before, he was using his amateur boxing a bit more, and I think he just moved away from it. But yeah, maybe we'll all be wrong. Maybe we'll be that person that everyone said he was. But I, I, I really don't see it. I think that to to combat the way that he's going to get on the inside and and almost like old school Mike Tyson, him come start with the body finish with the head I just think he'll get knocked out with a left hook about six to eight rounds there you now, go I'll put, put some prediction. money on it through Dan <laughs> <laughs> don't gamble people it's, it's not good for you and don't have active fire on them <laughs> <laughs> sound what else we got anything else we can go over obviously two big fights being signed uh, Tony Khabib and Connor Cowboy ah uh, yeah yeah which is at 170 isn't it yeah, so, got yeah. quite over, I think I got overlooked a little bit, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, no, so um, Connor and, uh, and and Cowboy at 170. 170 is like this this weight now, isn't it, where... It's like the in-between weight, you, isn't it? You've got like this fucking BMF shit going but on. That's what he's building himself towards. Exactly, it? yeah. It, it, the winner of this fights fights Masvidal for the BMF title, simple as that. Yeah. That's why I don't think they'll ever do the BMF title. I think they'll do they'll match the fight, but I don't think they're going to put I don't know. If McGregor wins, they'll fight for the BMF title, no doubt. Yeah. Okay. No yeah. doubt. Fair, fair, fair enough. Yeah, you guys yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. And then he can be the champ again. Yeah, the triple champ. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, Suhuda. <laughs> yeah. That's a great fight, isn't it? Masvidal McGregor. I want to watch that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to watch that. But he's but, saying but, about but, fighting Maidana though, isn't he? Have you seen Maidana? He's about 20 stone. <laughs> <laughs> but I think at 170 as well, I think it, it actually it actually swings it a little bit more in the uh, Cowboys' favour, you know, yeah. be, being a little bit heavier. Mm. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because I, I think that Connor stops people at the lower yeah. weights. Yeah. 
But I don't think he'll stop a 170 cowboy. But uh, I think he's going to stop cowboy. Yeah. I think mm. that cowboy's movement's a bit too basic and crude. And when he moves his heads at 12 o'clock, he watched Diaz versus cowboy. That he like stood him on his head, Diaz, yeah. just because the guy did not move his head once and never made any adjustments and all that business. And yeah. I think if you can't get out of the way of that left hand, it doesn't matter if you're a heavyweight. I think you're getting slept. So I just generally think that yeah. he's got the. Act. I just think like, he's got more of more of a cowboy's got more of a chance. At 170, I think, yeah. if, I think if at 155, I think that... It'll be interesting. I mean, what happens if he loses? What happens if McGregor loses? Like he's, He'll make loads of money no matter what. It's just his legacy that will be tainted, won't it? Like, I'm a fan. Well, it's a, a perfect I'm, fight for him, really. I'm a big fan, man. Yeah, yeah, I am. I've got, fucking, I've got a five foot by five foot painting out there. Did you see it when you came in? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. I'm looking after it. He changed the massive. game, didn't he? He, made yeah. It, yeah. He, he brought it to the mainstream and anyone... Uh, there's always haters in whatever you do and I'm not saying that it's perfect but the, the thing is this what everyone else to understand if you're going to get your, in your kex in the centre of the cage and you think that you're going to think like, if you're a logical human and you think that he thinks like you think again Yeah. because if he did you'd be doing that yeah. <laughs> and like, everyone expects that he's not going to be from that different type of world and all that and, yeah. and he made a few mistakes when he brought made it about the Dagestan made it personal for those guys and and for us we'll have a laugh of it and we understand British culture like Irish British culture is about giving each other shit whereas they don't get that No, it's on it's on yeah, yeah. And, and that's what they, he just made it something a bit bigger than, than he needed to yeah, the last yeah. time but now he's gone away and hopefully he'll come back and <laughs> give Cerrone some shit and he'll, yeah. he'll give it him back won't he so yeah. I think it'd be good Yeah, it's like, it's like all the stuff with it, people like slagging off Aaron Chalmers and shit like that it's like fucking hell mm -hmm. the, the man the man don't need to do this do you know no. what I mean he's having a fight he's, he, he's built his, his career he might have built it in a way that people don't fucking like or whatever but it's the same people who say steroids or you Oh, he's on steroids. I'm like, yeah, he's definitely on steroids, but he's not on steroids and sat at home. Yeah, yeah. you have to go and he, Chalmers is he, sacrificed a lot. He's going to the gym two times a day. You know what I mean, and all that. And, and, and he's and he's markedly getting better, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, that's he, it. He's, he's improving. He's training with good people and stuff. And it's like he, he's bringing eyes. Like he's selling tickets. Yeah, and, and then tickets kids. are paying. Other people's wages. Yeah, but they don't, unless you promote with a show, they'll never get it because uh, you think you make loads and that you don't do anything. But it's like, like you said, you understand that side of it and he understands it and the same side of it and so do his people. So yeah, you get propelled to the top of the card, Channel 5 and all that business and everyone will hate on that because you don't deserve it. But like you're bringing organic eyes, which business. makes it better for everybody else. So it's just fair play to yeah. anyone who wants to get in there and have a go. I think. When's I'll, that fame MMA card happening? Next is, weekend, isn't it? Is I that think. next weekend? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, next. Where's that going to be? Uh, the Newcastle Arena, whatever it's called now. Yeah. Utility or something like that. So is it all... Because all, I ain't really seen the full card. I think they got... Uh, is there uh, any just regular fights on it? Or is it all... No, all... someone rang me not long since and said, I think they're going to put an amateur undercard on it because there's only eight fights. And obviously, if they're all unboxed, chances are all eight right. of them could end in the first round. Not, yeah. not many... Not, if the, unless they're really well matched, but how have they matched it? Like it, it's not going to go. It's not going to be like decision after decision after decision. Ah. So eight fights, I assume three minute rounds. It's only going to be a small show. But I didn't really, I didn't hear any, anything back after it. So I generally think there's like only eight fights on it. Like yeah, uh, uh. is this the same promotion that does it in Poland? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they've, they've got a, they've got an event in Poland. And it's pretty big in Poland, isn't it? They have Massive like man. they have like singers fighting each but like other. We spoke about KSW before, like. If, that is their national sport. Yeah. So if you're a celebrity and you've like, you, like our national sport is probably football, isn't it? So yeah. if you play celebrity football, people will go watch it just by virtue of it's their national sport. So I think it's a little, like, there's a bit more education here. And I have a lot of companies from overseas approach me about bringing shows to the UK market. And I think it's a tough one to crack because there's so many people that are trying to get what they can out of it. And also the public, not really that bothered yet. Do you know what I mean? No, like it's no. much bigger in Ireland than it is in England. Yeah, yeah. So it's because of the McGregor thing, people people probably in Ireland are, are looking for that next McGregor we, to come through, never, aren't they? Well, of course, yeah. So that, that's where, like, I think, like, we spoke about promotion before. Like, I'm just, a, I am literally just a fan. I've, I obviously got to know you about it, but what I want to see is probably what most fans want to see. They want to get to know that person. So that marketing then comes from the promotion and how they portray that person. But it's also the responsibility of the fighter to have an online presence, which is a massive part of the game now, isn't it? And the UFC have educated them on that much yeah. better. And, and that's why you see the rise of it. And I agree, like, for, that's why I fell in love with the story. I remember Channel 5 fighting Hurts, don't you? The little yeah. foreshadowing of Tommy Maguire fighting AJ Wen. I was like, yes, I'm in. It was, let's go. And then, and then, so I think the ultimate fighter historically, like, yeah. made a big impact on, like, we used to call them tough noobs. Remember that? Tough, oh, you're a tough noob. Yeah. You're only, like, for, like from the first yeah, ultimate fighter. Yeah, because they've just got into ultimate fighter. Yeah. Because they watched it on TV. It, it was a Stephen Bonner, Forrest Griffin. I think, I think that 
that fight like changed the game, didn't it, for the yeah, UFC? Yeah, I yeah. think after that, the ratings, everything shot up. Yeah, yeah, because I went to UFC 50 something at, in in New New Jersey, and it was like terrible card. I think it was like Justin Eilers versus Tim Sylvia were the main event, and and they, that was really in the doldrums. And then like just by virtue of that fight, Bonner versus versus Griffin. Yeah, uh, they like. It just blew, blew up from there. Yeah, I it? think after that, that kind of smashed it. it, it? To me, it just seems fucking glaringly obvious. But like, I might be wrong. But I mean, like, you look at promoting any local show, like highlight reels and that. That isn't bringing people to watch the show. No one cares. Like, oh. yeah, I mean, it looks good. You know, he's like a highlight reel, whatever. But people care about who. Like, they're, they're invested in the story of the person. But you're coming from a different standpoint, and that's why we need people like you. That's why I said to think that you know everything is blind. Yeah. Like we come from the sport, so we want to see. We want to show what we think is the. The, the selling point, the yeah. USP, but the USP is people. You're ultimately selling people because there's shows on every weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got, you do have to foreshadow the event by by layering on like, but but having the budget and having the wherewithal yes, to do it that's is, super is a different but level, isn't it? That's, I guess for the smaller shows, it's having the connections with like, there's videographers are scattered around everywhere, freelancers everywhere. If you can put a brief together of what you want to deliver to sell a show, you can probably get it on a good price. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so like, if you'd be a bit more surprised, but yeah, if you Well, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm in the business. I, so I know what the rates are for videography. Does yeah. that make sense? So yeah, I suppose like, like, like you, you, you could get a competitive rate for a fighter because you could have a chat and be like, listen, this is we'll price. We'll sell it this for this. Yeah, yeah. But then they'll do one fight and then the fighter won't post anything about it and then never yeah. do it again. So you're right, forever juggling. That, that's the thing. We've, we've got that many promotions. Like someone might fight on Cage Steel and then the next event they fight somewhere else. So why would Cage Steel invest in that yeah. person and promote them when eventually they're going to fuck off the margin, anyway? The margins, nah, yeah, I know, the yeah. margins I are know. so delicate. Yeah, yeah. Between, like we've been there at the end of the show where I've been like 12 grand in the all and thinking, what is going on here? Like we've promoted it, we've put videos on. I remember I had a guy fighting up in, in South Shields and it took 300 tickets. Like 300 tickets, buzzing. I like got more production, like spent loads on that and on the night he brought back 278 and I was like, <laughs> what? Have you not... <laughs> I've been asking you, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, it's going well." And like, they, they, you just yeah. learn these things along the way. Do you know what I mean? But, but well, again, I suppose we're going down a rabbit hole. But is it not possible for if ever, if if it's well connected in the north of England? You know, like you say, like MMA. If everyone came together to put on a bigger event, a bigger show, like a bigger promotion, do you know? Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Then that's something that everyone can invest in, and that's put like ev- a super show. On, yeah, yeah, everyone's it's helping. just getting everyone to agree, though. Yeah, everyone's yeah, got a, it's proper difficult. Everyone's yeah. got their own agendas, aren't they? And yeah. It's, it's super. Obviously, we are just going down a rabbit hole, but it's super difficult. But we, I think we brushed it over a few things that might just be that moving forward. Like Danny and I, we did one event which was very ill fated. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we did an event at Leeds Town Hall, and we sold it out. We had the buy. It was like we had Frank Mir there. It was going to be amazing. In the second fight, someone slammed someone through the cage, and it broke, <laughs> and we and we lost. And the, cage, and the cage guy were nowhere to be seen. Uh, the cage guy was back in Rochdale. We had to ring him up. He came in. We were like, oh, it was it was pub team, mate. It was one of them days that just went in slow motion. I've had a few of them. Yeah, uh, ACB Nottingham was number one, but. Um, so yeah, it's it just one of those things, and and, and you, know, you think you've seen everything, don't you? But you've not seen everything yet. And like, if the show runs perfect before, the night is going to be a nightmare, isn't it? Yeah. And if it's a nightmare before on the night, yeah. you're like, this is men. And yeah, then I, I don't know. I mean, but like again, from like, I don't know. I don't understand. I obviously wouldn't know how fighters are managed. But again, if that was a, like, if there was a management system to manage all these fighters, then the investment in them as individuals, it. it, it goes through the different promotions as well. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So like, It's just education, isn't it? There's Where? got to be legs in it. Like somewhere, there's got to be like... But the reason that me and him are mates and and everybody, and Dean and the, the circle that we do have within the community is like, we understand there's enough for everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We understand that and we're not we're not greedy to our own ends. Like if I yeah. help Danny out in a few while, he's going to help me out and then we yeah. might make drinks here, there and everywhere. But if we just try and make our own drinks and not let anybody in, it's very yeah. short-sighted. So yeah, expand your knowledge by expanding like your community, isn't it? Well, like, yeah. like, so Everyone's just... fighting over this pie, but there's more pies. Yeah, there's loads yeah. of pies. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can have it. I don't want it. I've had it before and it tasted like shit. So I'll go look for these other pies and bring it all yeah. back together. Do you know what I mean? I, I had this conversation yesterday with somebody in like the media world, like media and marketing. And I'm saying, look, you're over there doing this thing. I'm doing over here doing this thing. We're all going to make a bit of money, but if we actually come together and build some Collect- bit more substantial just, there's so much out there like we don't need to, like let's fucking put our heads together you know yeah, yeah. preaching to the converted mate we're fully like in with that i think yeah yeah like he sends 
Louis down to ours, we'll go up to theirs for sparring. It's not just about that, it's about knowledge sharing, isn't yeah. it? And like, as soon, when I have a question, they'll call him or we'll just do it that way. Whereas other people are like, no, we can't go to him because if I say that to him, what if he says it to his students? And if I show them that, then they're going to fight our fighters. And if they beat us with that, because my knowledge is the best, and it's just mm. short sighted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just short sighted. Yeah, that's Interesting, it. Isn't it. Yeah, just. Because we don't want to beat. I don't want to beat someone from Liverpool. Obviously, I do. That's, sorry, I do. Uh, but we don't just want to beat someone from Liverpool. We want to beat the world. Yeah. yeah Whereas yeah, yeah. everyone's want to be a local hero. You can be a local hero because guess what? You'll, we'll all be, not that it's about money, but we'll all like doing this full time. And if you just become the local hero, you, you're not going to, at the end of it, have a house or anything like that. Yeah. If you can fight yeah. and, and get a house out of fighting, like, you've, you've completed it, haven't you? Yeah, you smashed it. So... Uh. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, like we could look at we could look at like a big a big event and get people. It's just getting people to agree and yeah. getting people together. It's oh hard. yeah, I mean, I, I think the way forward, what you're saying, and this is something I've suggested to Dom, is like signing people. So obviously, with all these like small independent promotions, you know, like obviously Cage Warriors sign people. Then you got like Bellator, Bellator Europe. That's it, really. I don't yeah. think any other show, UK based show. A few trying on there a little yeah. bit, but like you said, that would be the way but, to but do if it. But if you said, right, you know, is is 10 grand a year, you give us three fights, we sign you. That's yeah. fucking great, isn't yeah. it? And then you could, you could then, you know, invest in that person. Yeah. And yeah, you yeah. could. Oh, but the way to do it would be like, all right, you've got K Steel, I've got whatever, I, CFN, FFC, whatever. You they say, okay, you'll sign, but you sign to all, oh, like the yeah, umbrella yeah. company. Yeah, yeah, that's what, yeah. But again, it, it's. Again, it's it, it's all about pe- everyone has to agree. Because yeah, they're all different businesses that are different levels. I, I, I mean, I get that. Yeah. But, but that's what generally we do anyway. Like, yeah. cause like Danny and I have a management company called True Sports. So yeah. if you sign to us, then you'll probably fight on Case Steel. Then you'll go away and fight on one of the events that, that we match. And there's a building blocks. Like, it's got so many good fighters that are on the way up. Like, the Singh brothers. They, they, uh, just, there's so many. Mm-hmm. Like, I, next year, 2001, 2000, it's so exciting for everybody collectively, like, because we're going to be talking about the people that are our mates that have come just to the gym from zero, and they're going to be on the big stage, and yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's our time now. We're all <laughs> both only in our 30s, and we're, and we're already getting people on, on, on the world stage, so it's it's, it's dead classic, exciting, man. isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be a big year next year. Chris from XS Guys just said sponsor slash marketing seminar. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah, Which that's again, what the UFC do, don't yeah. it? They bring them in on in January yeah. and they have a, they tell them, they educate them on social media and how to sell themselves. Yeah, well, well like. I've already got. Yeah, yeah. So I've 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 I've, I've secured 18th of January. So I've got John Watham, who's like the mind coach he, he's guy. He's just commented saying uh, there there's there is food for everyone. Let's make a big fuck off pie. Yeah, yeah. yeah there you go. Yeah. So what jo- pie jo- is it though? <laughs> yeah. Would you sit on a dick and eat it? That's the problem, isn't it? <laughs> But, so John's Sit coming. <laughs> John, John's coming eighteenth uh, of January. He's going to do like a little seminar for the lads. So I, w- I was thinking I could tie in that day. So he's going to do like a one hour talk, you know, on like the mental side of things, mental coaching and stuff. And then he's going to do some one on ones. Now, yeah. while he's doing them one on ones, we could have another sort of yeah. mini seminar where we do the social media and marketing side. So I, I could make that day or even that weekend. Like I say, it's so January, so it's before all the fights yeah. start. That yeah. could be the one, mm-hmm. you know, and we just charge fighters, you know, well, a small fee depending on how many other coaches we'd be, we'd be in for that, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe we could even, we could talk about it, change our opening weekend so it all like mirrors, it could just be a big MMA weekend, we could bring some big names in and, yeah. and do it properly because that's the only way you would like bring guys to it in the first instance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and off subject, so you go into the English MMA Federation on Sunday? Oh, is that uh, this Sunday? Yeah. I, I'm in Poland. Polska, yeah. Yeah, because there were there were a meeting, weren't there, a couple of weeks, like, what, how many weeks ago were it now? But I, that, I, I couldn't make that. Yeah. Um, so I just I just spoke to Dean, and I think Dean did a little a little presentation, didn't he, on the coach and stuff. And so. I think he's going to present, say, present it to, like, the public now, or, like, fellow yeah. coaches and stuff like that. So I'm going to go down and show him some support. Anyway yeah, yeah. I, I, I called him and said, you know, just let me know, let me know how it all goes and stuff like that. Like, Dean's one of them guys <laughs> where... Because the thing is with me, with this with this English uh, MMA federation or whatever, uh, it's great, you know what I mean? It needs to happen. And, you know, they, they need people to help them and stuff. But I'm a busy guy and I can't yeah. I can't devote my time to this. Whereas Dean is, he's devoting his time to it. And he's one of them guys where if he was the head of, like, this organisation, I would send lads my, to yeah, him my lads and go. I would be fine. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? I'd be like, Dean will sort you out. Dean will... Culture, I, we've all done it, haven't we? We've sent yeah. Louis there. I've sent lads there. Yeah. That's where I, we've I'm gone. perfect. I'm
happy with, with that. Do you know what I mean? It has to be a tryout, though, doesn't it? Oh, I'm, if it's not, if it's I, th- not, I think it has to be fights. If it's not a, f- a competitive way to get on the team, I'm not putting my lads on it yeah, because it's just well, political then, and yeah. just about who you know yeah. rather than how good yeah, you that, are. That's not. kind of the uh, so Dean Dean uh, got me into this book, the Talent Lab, and, yeah. ba- and basically the, the oh sorry Matt Thorpe Matt Thorpe got me onto it, and uh, basically the the premise of the book, you know, it's all about like winning Olympic medals. And stuff. Yeah. It's all all the all the ins and outs of all the different sports and how they won medals, the the coaching methods. But the main premise of the book is is this, and this needs to try time after tournaments. They've got a massive blackboard, yeah. They put every Olympic athlete. They just write the names on this big blackboard, and then they just said, right, we're gonna cross out half of them. All I want you to do is go through and 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 cross out the people who can't actually get on the podium, who, who we think cannot get on the podium, because it's people who were just there to make up the numbers. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're like good enough to get on the team, but they're not good enough they to look, get on the... They look like the, yeah, yeah, they're never going like, to challenge like, the Like for, for, you know, the UK team or whatever, they can, they're good, but against the world, uh, you know, they're not going to get on the podium. So they just crossed out 50% of, of these athletes. And I think they even did that again. I think they got it down to like a third and then they said, right, so all this, say, say they had, you know, 10 million or whatever for all these athletes. Now they get that 10 million and just give it to a third. So everyone's got three times more money. Yeah. So it's like, shit. You know, so now we can, that, they can that's actually... That's like a school of excellence and that's what, like, the cream yeah. rises to the top, doesn't it? Yeah. You can't, and, just because they're friends with you, you can't, you can't. And, and I think that's what we need to do with these IMAF tournaments. It's like, we're sent, oh yeah, look at this, we've sent, we've sent 30 athletes, we've sent 40 athletes. Let's just send fucking 15 six, and have more six who can win. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Let's, yeah. let's trim it down and that don't mean they're in a place for all the others because we could have national championships yeah. you know we could we have spoke lower about le- that forever didn't we like, yeah we, an, we could have lower level tournaments you know what I mean and then you qualify and then the, the people who win the national tournaments go to the team and go to the but also if, this is what I think it's very difficult <coughs> to get competitive but through promotions should be competitive almighty fighting championship fight champion could fight the ISFC champion that's it, like as much as you want to do it all that way say alright you've got a champion we've got a champion they're both from England let's fight Yeah. and then, and then if he wins like you said it'll, it'll gra- gravitate towards who's best and yeah. it has to be that because we want to win don't we yeah yeah that's we it we've got to send the best and obviously the problem is a lot of the best guys are skint they've got no money yeah. so if you had these tournaments where if we did a national tournament where everybody had to pay to enter so you pay say you pay 50 quid and there's 10 in your category when you get to the final the winner gets 500 quid yeah. and then that way that's their entry fee yeah. to the because these tournaments are expensive yeah, to when you're to. there it's not free either is it yeah. exactly yeah so it's like if we could do that and then the, whoever puts the promotion on like I'm not saying I'm going to put the promotion on I'm just saying it needs to happen yeah, whoever it is, yeah. but whoever puts it on they can sell the tickets and make money from the tickets but the 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 money for the fighters just needs to come from the, you know, the yeah, entry fees. Their entry fees. And that, that way as like well, that. if you pay an entry fee, you've committed, aren't you? You know, yeah, it's yeah. showing that you're, you're yeah, committed. You, you, yeah, you're, not, you're not just trying, you look like, oh, let's turn up and just try it. If you pay that entry fee, that's like... Yeah, this is my commitment to commitment. doing this. Yeah, yeah. yeah so... I and think, it's a gamble as well, and you got to back yourself, haven't you? Like, yeah. I, first, one of the first fight shows I went to was in New York. It was just a smoker, and like, my mates are fighting on it, and they had to pay 100 quid to fight. And if you won, you won 200 quid. So you're like just gambling on yourself, aren't you? So it's like, if you don't back yourself, then yeah, don't yeah, yeah. don't show up anyway. There's no place for hiding in there, is there really? Yeah. Yeah, we need to do that over here more, don't we? Just bring your money in. Yeah. Uh, in Thailand. Thailand. Yeah, yeah. Yourself. Red, blue, red, blue. <laughs> <laughs> I want a bit on red. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's what they're like. <laughs> I'm there next week. Fucking hell. <laughs> Not if he's mentioned it, like. Uh, Brian Sorry, Lacey's mate. put a question in as well. He's put, uh, Carl keeps mentioning drinks. Uh, what is his favourite cocktail and why? <laughs> Shander. He knows me well enough to know that Danny and I, Danny likes the Smirnoff ice. And yeah. I like looking like I'm at least having a beer with Shandy. But if there's recorded league, which there never is in Eastern Europe, I'll, I'll definitely sup on that. What one, about yeah. when, when we're in Cyprus for ACB? <laughs> and every day I was just drinking like, or it, called, it was called like Fruit of the Gods or something. Like this <laughs> cocktail. I was just steaming constantly. Great time. Great. He's also great. asked there, uh, What's your favourite colour, Air Max? <laughs> yeah. uh, th- this is very in jokes, this, but thank you, Brian, for bringing this to the fore. As you know, uh, uh, Luke Barnett, corner man, and if you've ever seen Luke Barnett, he's, he's six foot six, and, and not only is he six foot six, he has the most questionable dress sense out of any man ever. Like, and, <laughs> what, and, even like, more than mine? Honestly, mate, even more than yours. Like, all the Spanish just go, Stilo, 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 Stilo. Whoa, okay, Stilo. Like, what is his style? I'm like, he came to the way in the other day, had a tracky on, and then, like, an alpaca fur coat. I was like, mate. 
and he had shades on inside. So they've all like, made him look blind. But anyway, to get to the <laughs> point, my favourite colour Air Max are obviously gold, Brian, because Luke Barnett brought me some like proper roadman shoes, like gold, uh, like you know, expensive ones as well. And I was like, oh, nice one, mate. And I, I wore them twice for Luke's fights. Because if I wore them around my mates, that would just get me a new arsehole torn for me. But thank you, Brian. And sorry, Luke. I do appreciate the gift. <laughs> <laughs> Quality. Any other questions? That, that's it, I think. <coughs> that's it. A couple of comments earlier on, but it's not relevant anymore. Mm-hmm. Moment's passed. Sound. <laughs> Is that everything, Jessup? Yeah. Do you want to go over Khabib Tony? Or ah, yeah. For day? We'll just quickly, Briefly, quickly talk about it. Yeah, Khabib, Khabib and Ferguson. What do you think? Ferguson's genuinely crazy, isn't he? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, he's I, like, into I like him. Yeah. Yeah, he's got problems, hasn't he? But it's yeah. not to like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But like, I mean, we want him to fight, but he has got issues. He's he's got the need. fact that they're allowing him to fight is, is, <laughs> says a lot about our sport. But he is the number one contender, and he does have a chance, doesn't he? He has yeah. got a chance more than more so than anyone. Can anyone let on as well now? I now think because everyone knows it is that Tony Ferguson talks to Tony Ferguson a lot out loud. That um, he uh, <laughs> they, they're not giving him much of a chance. But don't sleep on Ferguson. He's he's good everywhere, isn't he? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And 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 Habib is not unbeatable. He's not. He's his strikings. Well, he missed out when I was supposed to fight him back in the day, didn't he? Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. He could have got a power driver, <laughs> couldn't he? <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Fucking hell. How do you see it playing out, Danny? Um, it's an interesting fight, you know. It's, it's either going to be Khabib just going to hold him down and punch him, isn't he? Just like, like you know, any other any other day. Fight, mm. But uh, I just think Ferguson's got that like I say, he's got that ability to pull something out of the bag more so than anyone that Khabib's fought. And he believes he I can think. win. And he won't go... Like, McGregor, mate, like, he always talks about it was too defensive in that fight. And he became about not losing rather than winning. I don't think that Tony's got that in him. Even when yeah. he's in a bad position, he thinks, I'm a second, winner, I'm a second away from winning. He's always yeah. in the fight. Personally, I think Gaethje's, Gaethje will beat uh, Khabib just because of styles. Like, well, they have the same manager, so it'll probably never happen. Mm. Yeah. I didn't yeah. pass comment last time we spoke about Khabib. I had to turn off. When it come, I had to turn off one of his uh, podcasts for a bit. Yeah, the one specifically. Oh, yeah. yeah, like we got there are a lot of shit it's on YouTube, but is on oh, yeah, my yeah, channel because yeah, yeah. we we used to put it on my channel, not on like its, its own All Stars podcast channel. So mm-hmm. go subscribe to that. Um, we, we did one, and then we put like Khabib on like the thumbnail, and then we just started getting a lot of shit because I basically said I don't like Khabib, which don't get me like I respect him as a fighter. It's good, but it's boring as shit. It is like I, I want to see blood. Probably a people. casual fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I I'm a it. casual fan. Like, I get it, and I've got to talk for the casual fans, so. I'm sat, nah. here, I'm sat here on my, my armchair drinking my beer saying yeah it's boring and then as a striking coach I agree but at the same time I don't think there's anything more manly than being able to hold a guy down who doesn't want you to hold him down yeah, for 25 yeah. minutes while you punch him in the head and at the end of it you go nice one mate nah yeah <laughs> don't get me I know you tried every, really, you've learned you've been training for 20 years and it just made you look like a novice <laughs> but nice yeah. one mate cheers for showing up and that, that's what it is <laughs> what it? Did, it's uh, just mauling what, what did to Poirier amazing Amazing champion, like don't get me wrong. Please don't start abusing me in comments. Or you can, but <laughs> just I, I, I can't. I'm just, I want him to. Everyone said Al Quinta did, man. Oh, didn't I Quinta do, man? He lost by seven points. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. like the fact that he, like he stayed alive. He lasted yeah, and got bit, again. He, he got to later rounds and managed to stand. Yeah. The fight, yeah, he didn't. He just got up twice. That, yeah, so. that's, that, that's that was the most impressive thing. Yeah. But I, that says a lot about Khabib, doesn't it? Like he managed to do that to Connor. He's done it to Poirier. He lost like his first it. ever round to Connor, didn't he? His yeah. first ever round, that third round. But uh, AK, the, there's a th- all AK fighters have the third round off in a five round fight. It's like a known thing. Like so, okay. they'll, they'll save themselves for the fourth and fifth. Yeah. It's like a tactic that they that they deploy. So uh, I'm not saying that's the only reason McGregor had success in that round, but it's like he almost like let him back into the fight and then thought, ah, you know, I'll step on the gas and, 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 and yeah. submit you now. So you, you have to respect everything that he does. And if you're around him, he, he's got this aura, mate. Yeah, like have even And obviously you know who he is before you meet him and that, but he's got this crazy aura about him. So he is, some, he is something and somebody special like yeah. Oh yeah, amazing. I mean, recently the um, Anatomy of a Fighter just released a, a, a little clip of Frank Mir talking about him. Mm. I don't know if you've seen it. And he talks about his presence and how respectful he is as a person and how he is an amazing representative of martial arts and his religion and, being a champion and not being what we all like, which is some marketing whore. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, well, true, it's, isn't it? Well, their, their culture is all about humility, yeah. especially outwardly. And then it's like their culture is also 
in, martial arts is intrinsically linked with politics. So if you're going to be out there and putting yourself out there and being this big ballsy bravado guy, it's not going to end well for you. So uh, yeah, it's yeah. like he he is now the figurehead for Islam, isn't he? Really? Yes. Like, yeah, 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 when yeah. we when we went to and, and and a good and a good figurehead for it too because he shows that straight humility and also he's not scared of jumping off a cage and trying to jump on someone's head. And I respect <laughs> that like, more than anything else. So you can be cool and humble, but when it's on, it's on, isn't it? And, yeah, yeah. And, and especially if you got like. Like a, a seagull and shit on your head, jump on his head, isn't it? <laughs> that, that's I think that's more scary than anything. That's what I find petrified about Khabib is that he's so humble, so like he's got a humility, but then he's obviously a lunatic. So he'll jump out of a cage and kicks yeah. me in the head. Do you know what I mean? Like that's mental. He's obviously a lunatic, isn't he? Yeah, I yeah, mean yeah, you've got yeah, to be angry to get in a cage. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Well, you're all nuts, <laughs> but it is fucking mental, that, isn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely mental. But it's but, mental, yeah. isn't it? And then, then the way that I, I like it, me not the pack mentality. I'm not a fan of the pack mentality, but you look after your own. And if like one of you go to war, all go to war. And a lot of people say it's like a false rhetoric now, but with with, with the Dagestanis and with that team, it's, it's it's genuinely a team. And if if you if you've got a problem with one, you've got a problem. with Yeah, one. I've said it before. Like when I went Bahrain or whatever, and there were all the fucking uh, Irish sat behind me. And then, like, all, all the Dagestanis and that sat in front of them all turning around. And I, and I was, like, between the two. And I was, like, fucking hell, I'm caught yeah, into no, me, yeah. Really. And then when I looked, there were loads of guys with guns. And the Irish were like, yeah, yeah, these have been following us around. You know, they're just, they're like our armed guards because there is a real threat. There yeah. is a real, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cap, Like, when when we did EFN, uh, John Kavanaugh were there. And obviously, Shik Shebakov is a Dagestani guy. And the first thing he said to me, he said, we don't have any problem. I like cleared the fact that there was no issue between them just because he's from Ireland and he's from Dagestan. Like, <laughs> it was crazy, mate. Yeah, but you know Peter Queely when he fought in Dagestan, he didn't fight a guy from Dagestan. He, they had, I think they needed six six police cars to get him out of there. At the end, I think there were like three thousand people outside his change room trying to get in. Imagine <laughs> I've been there, mate. It's not. It's a different place, and in three thousand people are trying to get in your dressing room. Like, oh my god! What am I doing here? No wonder he's fighting for Bellator. Now, anyway. <laughs> if there's any significance. Being in New York, the Tony interview fight, the uh, New York stopping the Diaz cut. For, for those that, for those listening, uh, the woman of uh, Jessup is just yeah. there any significance of the fight being in New York, given that Tony splits people's face up for a living, and um, the New York Commission like to stop fights. Yeah, the New York ABC are brand new, aren't they? Proper novices, aren't they? Like when we work out in Vegas, and it's like. A bit of a horror show, really, because you'll have like Ad Adelaide Bird at one side of the ring making a living, and then Mazaga at the other, and you think, aren't these people being kicked out of the sport? And then they come into our event, and then I think at New York, it's like, it's who, about who's getting paid. Commercially, I think they're going to make loads of money because it's at the Garden, and then, yeah. like, I've never really seen a big cut in a heavy fight. Of, uh, you know, I don't. So hopefully it won't be coming it's, down it's, to that. It's Tony's the one though, isn't it? Yeah. Ah, the fight, the Diaz fight was a stoppage anyway. That fight's got to be stopped. If you're not stopping that fight, what fight do you stop? Yeah. Like, I could, you could see his skull and I know, <laughs> oh, yeah, he's like, he's tough, he's Diaz, he always gets cuts. All right, sound, mate, yeah. So like, just you're run just out in front of the car fucking... and that, if, if you think that's the case. <laughs> <Yeah, it's> just... <coughs> sound, which is enough, and that was that was enough, weren't it? I think from yeah. the, it could have stopped at the first round. It could have stopped at the yeah, end of the I think first it was round. just bad, like for, for that fight, I think they should, they should have left it a bit longer, let him heal up from his previous fight. Because he'd only just, how, how recently? Um, yeah. Eight weeks. Eight yeah, weeks. he fought Pettis, didn't he? Yeah, he no, split no, his face straight. up and they should have looked, he's fucking. He needs that Vandalay surgery, doesn't he? So he looks what, like. So he doesn't look like Vandalay. So he looks like he, Stallone. He'd probably look more like Vandalay <laughs> if he had this. <laughs> you remember, it looked like when he came out with that nose and, that, and he had these eyebrows that he'd never had for about 10 years. You're like, who is that? And, and everyone's like saying, it's Cyborg. Yeah. It's <laughs> like, it was Chris Cyborg. That's what he looked like at the time, wasn't it? Fucking hell. <laughs> is that everything, mate? Yep. Everything. So, Sweet. Scariest man ever, though. Was he the scariest man ever? Pride Vandalay. Was he the scariest fighter ever? When he had that sandstorm on that we were eating Gary's to, and he yeah, had, yeah, <laughs> his wrist to it. Just volleying people in head. Uh, I don't know. I think I, th I think like Igor Vovchanchin probably. Yeah. Probably, he'd yeah. probably pretty. Because he pretty would scary. do a lot of dick punching, wouldn't he? <laughs> he would like throwing ten straights to the penis, mate. Right? <laughs> oh, last question from Lee Hurd's just come in. Uh, when's this jujitsu match between uh, me and Lacey happening? I was having to tell you. He's retired, oh, yeah, aren't he? Yeah, yeah. He's is retired. He retired. Yeah. He heard that you were doing training, so he <laughs> retired. Now, I think you've done his ACL and stuff. Yeah, he's really so fucked his knee, hasn't he? I've it? done Bad. my MCL. He never as well. brings it up. I've fucked my MCL. So. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, stem cells, Jessup's thinking now. Jessup's yeah. in Cornwall. PRP like, in Spain, I can get Lacey, very can, cheap. <laughs> Lacey, can you get us a, one of them first class trips on one of your fancy aeroplanes? Ah, yeah, yeah. He always and, says you can only get one if you've got the last name Lacey because uh, I've, I've been. I, I'm with, willing to change my name by depot <laughs> if you can. Sort me it too, out. mate. He lives a life of privilege with his silver spoon. <laughs> I'll definitely change my name. But now nah, we've flown on the same flight to Australia working on the same job. He was in first class and I was like sat between two people like, like for a day, a full day. I was like, you're not going to come see me? He's like, nah, and you can't come see me. <laughs> you bastard, Brian. The day will come. We'll get a jujitsu match at some point, I'm sure. And he still says he's from Yorkshire, doesn't he? I know, yeah. Are you, you mad? Too, he Are you mad? <laughs> no one from Yorkshire went to the Royal School of Performing Arts, did they? <laughs> no one. And if they did, they're not allowed back. <laughs> He's abandoned us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thanks for coming in. It's been thanks awesome. Us, mate, yeah. I'm just dying. Don't worry about me. So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't think we'll be, we might be podcasting next week. Danny won't be here. I won't be here, but maybe, maybe Jay will come down. I don't know. Ah, yeah. Mr. Time. Furness needs to make another appearance. We'll get Bramald. If Bramald's not in a ditch or, you know, still shit faced, we might get Bramald on because yeah. he's a good laugh, isn't he? My uh, co commentator for, for Risk. Sound. And new champ. He's actually a really good commentator. He is, isn't he? I know. I, even I was shocked. I was like, he just switched it on. I'm glad Better he at commentating he is at playing the guitar. Thank God he doesn't do that. Oh, <laughs> no, no. Oh, he's, op- he's open. That video gets buried between times. <laughs> when you brought it up for the stag new. Uh, I like the Pringle shout, though, mate. That was it. Yeah. Oh, laughing it's right, though, isn't yeah, it? laughing at that one. <laughs> it does. His body looks like a Pringle. He's got like, he's got like that curve. <laughs> or that flat curve. <laughs> like a walk. I bet he irons his clothes with a walk. <laughs> He's got that Auschwitz build on it. I love it. <laughs> Stuck in that little cell. Oh, four yeah. people in. Right, we're getting dark now. We'll leave it at that. Right. We'll be back next week. Danny won't be here, but uh, yeah, catch you on next one. Cheers.